Looking for a gift for that special person? Why not give an Amazon gift card? Design your own. Choose from 20 different occasions. Use your own photo or video. Send by email or text message. Click the link in the description below to get started. Today's episode is called, Better Never Than Late. Kate Bradley battles rural postmasters to recover an ill-advised letter from the mails. Original air date, January 4, 1966. Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet, and even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. Secretarial school right now. That's nice. Right now. Fine. But you better hurry up and have your breakfast or you're going to be late for secretarial school. <laughs> but, Mom, didn't you hear what I said? Well, of course I heard what you said. You said. What do you mean you're quitting secretarial school? Well, now that I've completed the beginner's course, there's no point in continuing. Well, the way I see it, there's no point in quitting. You're doing very well. Why, you've got the best grades in typing, shorthand, filing, erasing. <laughs> You're going to get that diploma. But, Mom, I don't feel right not helping you with the hotel. You can help me by becoming an efficient secretary who can take 120 words a minute. Mom, I can do 60 now, and nobody in Hooterville can dictate more than 10. <laughs> now, Billy Joe, I want you to be prepared. Now, you never know. Someday a businessman with a very fast jaw might move to town. Hi, Billy Joe. What's bothering her? Oh, she has some crazy idea of quitting school so she can help with the work around here. Oh, I can understand that. You can? Did you ever have a crazy idea like that? <laughs> I know what's bothering her. She wants to earn some money, and she can't do that while she's going to school. Why not? Well, how can she? Well, it's easy. <laughs> Nothing like relaxing with a good magazine once you got your business letters dictated. Beg your pardon? Don't tell me you got more business letters to dictate. Business letters? <laughs> That's funny you should mention that. I see the hotel's got a public stenographer. I didn't know that. Yeah, I'll get her for you. No, thank you. Hey, well, wait a minute. Oh, you don't need to worry. Her prices are reasonable. I don't care anything about her prices. I knew you were a spender the minute I laid eyes on you. <laughs> I'm not looking for a public stenographer. You don't have to look for it. She's right here in the hotel. I've got nothing to dictate. If you'd set your mind to it, I'm sure you'd think of something. They say she makes these carbon papers real good. That way you got yourself a copy in case somebody called you a liar. <laughs> Why should anybody call me a liar? Well, they ain't about to once you show them the carbon copy. That's real smart thinking, friend. I do not want a public stenographer. You want to put that in writing? <laughs> Dang, I wish that public stenographer wasn't as good as she is. Hmm? Oh, I didn't see you sitting there, Mr. Billings. <laughs> now, that's just the trouble. She advertises too much. Who does? That great little stenographer that types real good and don't charge much. That's why people are always dictating letters to her. I guess you're ahead of me, too. No, no, I... Well, that's all right, Mr. Billy. You can take my turn. I'll go tell her. Please don't bother. Uh, can you tell me where I can find the public stenographer Just who... Just a minute, Mr. Norton. 
How long will you be needing her? But I don't need her. I have to dictate a letter. It's very impolite to interrupt when Mr. Billings is talking business. <laughs> now, look, I... Now, don't thank me. I know you got a lot of real important letters to get going on. Will one o'clock be all right, or will you be wanting her sooner? Oh. <laughs> well, hey, Mr. Norton, you can have Mr. Billings' turn. <laughs> table's been here for years. I was talking about the sign. Sign? Oh, oh, well, you see, there was such a big demand for a public stenographer. The guests were just hounding me that I, I just up and made that for Billy Joe. I told you I wanted her to finish secretarial school. Well, with all the paid practice she's getting around here, it wouldn't surprise me none if she finished head of her class. Paid practice? Yeah, she's taking dictation from one of the guests up in his room right now. Oh. Well, she must be so proud to... His room? <laughs> that nice old Mr. Billings? Middle-aged Mr. Grant. <laughs> the difference is make how old they are as long as they can dictate. Uh, Miss Bradley, I think I should warn you that this letter is going to contain some very strong language. That's all right, Mr. Norton. I've got a very strong pencil. All right, let's get on with it. Uh, dear Mr. Mortimer. Uh, no. Dear rat. No, wait. Uh, you rat, how dare you? Would you believe it, Miss Bradley? This, this fink led me on to believe that his company was about to give me a big order and, and, and then he cancels out. Oh, that's a shame. But you'll get more orders. Well, that's not the point. This, this Mortimer's got me in a jam with my own outfit. I, on my say-so, the head office has turned down other orders just to give Mortimer a priority. Oh, well, let's, let's get on with the letter. <laughs> uh, read back what we have so far. You rat, how dare you... No, oh, you think you... <laughs> Need more towels? <laughs> You're right, Mr. Norton, and here they are. <laughs> <clears throat> Where were we? You rat, how dare. No, scratch that. That's too nice for you. <laughs> Dear lowest of the low, we had a firm deal and you canceled it. Uh, the next time I see you, you'd better be ready because you'll never know what hit you. Nobody's going to... Uh, <laughs> say our guests... Need clean towels. <laughs> You'll never know what hit you. No, no, no. That, that, that's not nasty enough for you. <laughs> Dear snake, you are so slimy that you could crawl under another snake and... Mr. Norton, I know it's none of my business, but this letter starts off so angry, Mr. Mortimer might tear it up before he gets to the real good part. You're right. You're right. I'll, I'll start off... Nice and friendly, and, and save the clincher for the last, where I compare him to a skunk. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Yeah. Uh, dear pal, even though you uh, canceled that big order, I understand. Uh, when I get back to town, I'd like you to drop by my apartment. <laughs> Just put the towels on the dresser, Bobby Joe. <laughs> I'm checking out this afternoon. Why am I getting all these towels? Because we run a first-class hotel, that's why. <laughs> you know, I think that's a great idea where you skunk them at the end. <laughs> Trip. Please, Gloria, I just ate. <laughs> Mr. Mortimer just... Don't mention his name. He canceled the order. But he just phoned. He talked his boss into changing his mind. There'll be a check in the mail for $15,000 in a few days. He did? Well, good old Frank. <laughs> Boy, am I lucky. I, I wrote him a letter that would have... Well, frankly, I didn't mail it because I was trying to think of something stronger than a two-faced skunk. <laughs> I'm certainly glad that I... 
I... It's gone. I've lost it. Well, where did you see it last? As a private treasure hunter, can anybody play? You know that Mr. Norton came all the way back here to find a letter that he lost. The one that Billy Joe wrote so good? That's the one. The one that the fellow stabbed you in the back with a canceled order? Exactly. Yeah, well, you can stop your hunting. I just found it a little while ago down by the station. How could I ever thank you? No thanks called for. Mailing lost letters for guests, the service of the hotel. <laughs> if Uncle Joe said that he mailed that letter, that you can... Uncle Joe! <laughs> you mailed that letter? That's what I've been to. Well, uh, I didn't actually mail it. You didn't? Well, I found it. I gave it to the dog, and he ran it down to Floyd at the station. <laughs> Don't need denying it. When Mortimer gets my letter, he'll put a stop payment on that check. Well, you should have thought of that before you mailed it. <laughs> I didn't mail it. It dropped out of my... Oh, Mrs. Bradley, I... if I don't get that letter back, I'll be ruined. Well, that shouldn't be hard. Sam, I want you to help me get a letter back. A cake? Hey, I right was now. here first. Yeah, I know, honey. Sam. I'm you... planning on making a fruit cake. Now I'll need some cherries and some uh, figs. No, no. My youngest breaks out from figs. <laughs> Try some dates, Sina. Sam. Good idea, Kate. Date, Sam. And five pounds of walnut. And I think I'm out of nutmeg. Or is it cinnamon? It's nutmeg. You borrowed some from me last week. Sam. Cinnamon. Nutmeg. Sam. Cinnamon. Nutmeg. Sam. A large can of nutmeg. And then a couple of pounds of, uh, let me Lena, see. Lena, this is an emergency. Would you just let me talk well, to really, Sam, I... please? Well, I guess I can come back later. Thank you. Uh, what is it, Kate? Well, Sam, it's about this letter. And it was... Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Sam Drucker's general store. Hello, Newt. A pinochle? Tonight? Well, I, I don't... Tonight will be fine. Bye, Newt. <laughs> Kate! Oh, Sam, I gotta get this letter back that was mailed by mistake, so would you go through your mail for me? Hold it, Kate. You just don't get a letter back. There's a certain procedure that has to be followed. First, you gotta fill out Form 1509. Oh, well, give me the form. Sure, I've got one right here. I pride myself on keeping a tidy drawer. <laughs> Uh, Kate, when you finish filling that out, I'll send it to Washington, and they'll mail you one of these. <laughs> NRA? Yeah, I saved some of these applications. In case NRA ever comes back, I'll be ready for them. <laughs> no, I know the right form is in here. Somewhere. You don't happen to need a, a gasoline ration book. <laughs> Sam, the form. Mr. Norton stands to lose now, a lot of money. Norton? Norton? fellow that wrote the letter. Well, have you got his permission to get it back? Well, of course. In writing? In yelling. Oh. Well, seeing as how this Mr. Norton wants it back so bad, if you'll just put down the facts on this piece of paper and then sign it. Oh, thanks. And then when you're finished, I'll notarize it. If I can find my seal. Where did that put the seal? I hope it isn't in that drawer. Oh, I wouldn't put it in there. I'd to clutter things up. Uh, when did you use the seal last, Sam? Well, I see Fred Ziffel was into... No, he didn't want anything notarized. He was... <laughs> oh, that Fred Ziffel. You know what he wanted? Sam, never mind Fred Ziffel. The seal. Oh, yeah, well, uh, let me think. Whenever I lose something, I look for it in the least likely place it's liable to be. Well, that'd be pretty silly, Kate. The least likely place would be right here in this coffee bin. Now, if you can tell me how a notary seal would wind up in... <laughs> now all we have to do is find form 1509. Oh, Sam, would you let me look? I feel lucky. You know, mothers are awfully good at finding misplaced articles. <laughs> oh, well, I'll be dang. I did it! Yeah, you found a pink slip to my old Stutz bear cat. I haven't seen that thing in years. You remember that old bear cat of mine? <laughs> Well, of course, I put them right here so I'd be sure to find them. 1509. Oh, Sam, I'm awful sorry to put you to all this trouble. Oh, it's no trouble at all for a man who keeps his inventory right at his fingertips. <laughs> uh, okay, where's the letter? Let, oh, oh, well, that'd be over at Pixley Post Office. What's it doing over there? 
It left here about an hour ago, the way the mail usually does. Well, why did you have me fill out these forms? You'd have to fill it out anyway when you got to Pixley. You ever see that drawer over at Pixley? <laughs> We'll be there in plenty of time. Well, why are we going so slow? We're on the downgrade side of Bleecker's Hill. What are you going so slow for, Charlie? Kate's got to get to Bixley. I got it on full throttle now. Look at your pressure gauge. <laughs> we stopped. I wonder what's wrong. Oh, the train's probably stopped for Mark Finney's Holstein. Why would they stop to pick up a cow? Kate, the cow ain't getting on the train. The way Charlie and Floyd run the cannonball, the cow probably got on the track for safety. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. Boys, we got to get to Pixley. Yeah, get that cow off the track. There ain't no cow on the track. Floyd forgot to load the tender, and we're out of wood. How could you be so absent-minded? Well, let's not blame Floyd. Let's just figure out a way to get to Pixley. Yeah, Kate's right. It's a time for doing, not gabbing. Here, don't sprain your back. It isn't Charlie's fault we gotta get to Pixley. That's right, the one that started all this should do the work. I appreciate the chance to make up for forgetting the wood. Well, we will all help you, Floyd. Oh, don't need no help. I can throw this axe handle into the firebox all by myself. <laughs> in the world ain't no good unless you got some tinder to get her going. is closed. Uh, you know, Mr. Foley, the postmaster, maybe you can get him to open up for us. Well, it ain't going to be easy. Foley's a stickler for the rules. Don't worry, I'll unstick him. <laughs> but, Mr. Foley, I signed Form 1509 at Sam Drucker's. Oh. Oh, that's for getting the letter back. That don't say nothing about opening up the United States of America post office after closing hours. But this is an emergency. If I don't get that letter back, Mr. Norton will lose all kinds oh, of money. Well, let's see what the rule book says. Glasses, glasses. Oh, here, use mine. Oh. Uh huh. Rules and regulations. There we are. Uh, emergency. Uh, page uh, 298. Uh -huh. Page 298. Page 298. Emergency. See footnote B. <clears throat> Footnote B, see page 302, footnote D. <laughs> post notice. Arrangements should be made for a bulletin board in a convenient place in the post office lobby for post and notices. <laughs> By golly, I ought to get me a bulletin board down to my office. That'd be very nice, Mr. Foley. But that's not what I'm interested but in. But you should be. <laughs> the United States Post Office is... No, no, sorry. Uh, let's see. Uh, footnote D. Special circumstances. Why doesn't the rule book tell you to turn to the right page in the first place? I can't. Why not? It's a rule. <laughs> Any person eligible for <clears throat> other federal employment may be appointed postmaster subject to... You're reading to... footnote D and you want footnote C. Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, window service may be extended whenever it is specifically determined to be in accordance with the need of the community. Uh, sorry, Kate. Sorry, Kate? You live in Hooterville. That ain't our community. Mr. Foley, if I don't get that letter back, Mr. Norton is going to sue me for $15,000. Fifteen? Ah, ah, here we are. Special rules involving problems uh, without footnotes. 
The uh, post office can be opened under certain circumstances at the discretion of the postmaster. <laughs> Rule 324.5. I guess that does it. Let's go. Oh, Mr. Foley, you're probably the nicest uh, man that I... Let's not waste time. I... Uh-oh. What's the matter? I've got my key. You, you don't happen to have a coffee then, do you? Hmm? Well, that's where Sam Drucker found oh, his seal. Hold it. I know where it is. Where? It's in the post office. How are we going to get in? Just like I always do. Call the locksmith. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi. Hi. Uh, get me Tad Fisky, please. Oh. Well, thank you. <laughs> well? Well, he's over at the movie house. Short, bald fellow with glasses. You find him and I'll meet you at the post office. He's a short fellow with bald glasses. Well, what your mother means you with a bald fellow with short glasses? That's what I said. Come we know. But I ain't seen all the pictures. Well, they all live in the same way. The good-looking fella stops the one-eared man from blowing up the universe. Oh, heck, I know that. But what about all them pretty gals running around with them little bathing suits? Did they get blown up? Oh, no. The hero drives off with them. Only the girls in the regular bathing suits get killed. Oh. Now, Mr. Fisker, you stay right here while I round up the rest of my family, huh? <laughs> I tell you, I'm not Tad Fisky. I know you want to see the rest of the picture, Mr. Fisky, but this is an emergency. He's Tad Fisky. Even Mr. Fisky. How's the missus? <laughs> you see, Lion gets people no place. He just wants to see the rest of the picture. I'm not Tad Fisky. But, Mom, I want to see how the picture ends. It'll say the end. <laughs> now, where's Mr. Fisky? He was here just a minute ago. I told him I'm not Tad Fisky. Well, the next time you come to a show, don't be short and bald-headed and wear glasses. Well, come on, let's go find him, and this time, don't let him get away. <laughs> but it ain't right to leave just when the one-eared man is sawing the hero in half. That's not the real hero. That's his double. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if he gets it. Please stay right here while I get the others. <laughs> Evening, Mr. Fisky. I knew you were Mr. Fisky. Oh, now. You girls stay right here while I find Uncle Joe, and that isn't Mr. Fisky. I'm sorry. No, 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 don't touch me. Please don't touch me. Now, listen, you girls don't move from this. But, Mom. You can see it when it comes on television. <laughs> Gee, I wonder if the heroine has found out that the bad guy put dynamite in the toaster. It wouldn't hurt if one of us peeked. I'll peek. Now, you two stay right here. Oh, no. She's not gonna... Oh, no! We got you, Christian. We ain't fighting. We gotta get out of the post, huh? You ain't, Fisky. You figured that out all by yourself, I bet you. <laughs> now, where are the girls that told him to wait right here? You go that way. Boy, <laughs> was that ever exciting. Wow, Mom almost caught us. <laughs> I doubt Fox may have taken off his glasses. Uncle Joe, that's not the man. <laughs> now, do you believe me? Look, mister, you may be able to fool these youngsters, but don't go thinking you got a boob on your hands. I've read enough of these detective books, I know. He's Fisky. <laughs> Let's take them both, just to be sure. <laughs> going to Indianapolis? Chicago. New Jersey? Chicago. Well, we've got a pile of mail there for Indianapolis and New Jersey, but all the Chicago mail left here just before we closed. <laughs> Great. I'm sorry, Mr. Norton, but we tried. Thanks, I, I know you did. $15,000 down the drain. If you want to write another letter, like a resignation or anything, Billy Joe would be glad to do it for nothing. Mr. Mortimer probably would have given me a lot more big orders in the future. Hi, everybody. Hi, Floyd. I'm sorry about the letter, Kate. All those commissions. That post office sure is hard to get along with. Well, they're just doing their job trying to deliver the letters we mail. Well, they wouldn't deliver this one. I wanted to do you a favor, so I wrote special delivery on it and mailed it but I forgot to put special delivery stamp on it, so they sent it back. Oh, well, that's all right, Floyd. Oh, don't you worry, Kate. 
I'll buy two special delivery stamps and put them on it, and it'll be delivered twice as fast. <laughs> you do that. <laughs> you see, Mr. Norton, other people have problems with... What special delivery letter? Hi! <laughs> Hi! You want a special delivery stamp? Kate's got one in the drawer. Oh, thanks, I... <laughs> <laughs> Junction. Junction.